Charles Darwin is famous for his theory of natural selection, or survival of the fittest, as it's known colloquially, though not formally termed by Darwin. More tolerant to stress, better at catching prey, or better at hiding from predators, these individuals survive, they have sex, they pass on their genetics, and the process repeats. But this is at the level of individuals within a species. And while we are still somewhat evolving, for better or for worse, a timescale of evolution that we can observe is that which goes on inside of us. Cellular selection, or cellular competition, as we will discuss all about in this video. Because it's interesting to think about. If survival of the fittest occurs in cells too, then us being composed of trillions of cells, you may think that over time, as we age, our cells would get fitter, as they've outcompeted the less fit cells. So then, why do we age? Well, I thought I was alone in my thoughts about this, but then I actually did some research, and of course I'm not. So let me explain what we do understand about this potential paradox in this video. So firstly, we need to consider what do I and the field mean by cellular fitness and cellular competition? Well, my first understanding of cellular fitness probably came from sperm swimming to fertilize an egg. If they can't move or migrate in the right direction, then they have no chance of fertilizing the egg. So those that can have better odds. They are more likely to be winners. But while sperm competition is likely considered an example of cellular competition, I was more interested in understanding cellular competition in somatic cells in adult bodies. So the cells that make up our different tissues and organs that are not going to be used to make the next shiki. But like with natural selection, for cellular competition to occur, there must be variation, a heterogeneous population of cells, whereby cells with higher fitness have a competitive advantage over neighbouring cells that have comparatively lower fitness levels. Fit cells are then selected to populate a tissue, while less fit cells undergo elimination. But is this really the case? Well, from a naive yet logical perspective, Cellular competition seems an advantageous process for an individual to have, and for which we now also have evidence that it does occur. But it does raise many questions. What is a fit cell? What makes a cell fit? And what causes differences in the fitness of a cell? How do cells know if they're fit relative to their neighbours? What are the mechanisms used? Why do we age if cells are getting fitter, or does that mean they don't get fitter? Could we enhance cellular competition to increase health span or lifespan? Well, lucky for you, we will now address each of these questions in turn. So firstly then, what makes a cell fit? Is fitness the same as health? Now, whilst I like to think I'm quite fit, if you think of a fit person, you may think of an athlete, a celebrity, someone who is muscular, in good shape. But actually, fitness can be defined more accurately as the ability to meet the demands of the environment and relates to how physically demanding life is. So a person doing an office job requires lower levels of physical fitness than, a, a, than an Olympic athlete, right? And so with many people working in non-physical or sedentary jobs, this means that the fitness requirements of a society decreases. The person is fit enough to meet the sedentary needs of our lifestyle, but we could say they are not as healthy. And that's the important point. Health, which can be described as the complete physical, mental and social well-being, and not only the absence of illness or infirmity, thank you BBC Bite Size, isn't the same as being fit. We'll come back to this later, but for now, what do these definitions mean in the context of cells? Our definition of health doesn't really work for a cell, but fitness is about the cell being able to meet the demands of the environment, and that will depend on where, what tissue, and what you, the individual, are up to, and external stresses you place on the cells. So now for the big question, does cellular competition even occur? Well, cellular competition, 
and an initial understanding of cell fitness, seems to first be described in many favourites model organism, Drosophila, the fruit flies, in 1975. Flies that had a genetic mutation in ribosomal proteins, these are the proteins that are involved in making more proteins, a cell needs proteins to grow and divide, the cells grew more slowly. When mutant cells were grown with wild-type cells, so without any mutations, in the wing disc of the Drosophila, they were selected against and eliminated. So the mutations made the cell less fit. So therefore we know that cell competition exists. But why? And how do cells compare their fitness? And why would there be cellular competition? Well, currently there are three models of cellular competition. Competition for nutrients and survival factors. Fitness sensing by cellular recognition. And then lastly, mechanical cell competition. In all cases, the current definitions reinforce that these are examples of active elimination of the less fit cell. It's not some passive process. And out of these three proposed mechanisms, fitness sensing has been further understood by one of the leaders in this field, Eduardo Moreno, who is now starting a group actually at the already infamous Altos Labs, where he showed in a landmark 2010 paper evidence for a flower code in flies that enables them to sense the fitness of their neighbours. Yes, you heard me right, a flower code. Now, this actually has nothing to do with flowers, but instead to do with a membrane protein called flower. Depending on which isoform of the flower protein the cell was expressing, it predisposed the cell to be a winner or a loser. So the flower code is like the cell competition code that neighbouring cells can use to work out if they're they're fitter. But it also depends on neighbouring cells. If they both have loser signals, then both losers remain. And this is an important point to remember for later when we look at ageing. But okay, but so why and how would this cause cellular competition? Well, this leads us on to another landmark study in 2015 showing that the elimination of unfit cells maintains tissue health and prolongs health span in Drosophila, again these fruit flies. They discovered in this paper another protein that plays a role in the flower code and by manipulating the abundance of this protein in the flies, it impacted their health and lifespan. This protein is called azot in flies and as far as we know, it's a protein that combines calcium and likely has a myriad of functions within a cell. Effectively, what they show in this paper is that cells that lack azot are unable to fitness sense suboptimal cells, so instead of elimination, they accumulate in the tissues. This has the consequence of causing tissue degeneration, whereby flies that lacked this protein showed signs of accelerated aging. And therefore, unsurprisingly, they also found that flies that lacked this protein had a shortened lifespan with a 52% decrease in the median survival compared to wild-type flies. But even more interestingly, flies that had an extra copy of this protein lived even longer than the wild-type flies, showing an increase in median survival of 54%. But anyway, what this paper suggests is that cellular competition is important for maintaining healthy tissues and thus for ageing, and appears a higher level sort of quality control mechanism. But then this goes back to what I said earlier. If we have this mechanism to select for fitter cells, well, why do we age? Well, from what I've read, there are two sort of theories that could address this. Firstly, we start selecting for super fit cells that may not be good for long-term health. And then secondly, something starts to become defective in the cell competition process, potentially a consequence of some other ageing hallmark. For example, in general, cells become less fit due to mutations over time, so they might be selecting from an older but less fit population of cells. So with the first point, super fit cells then, that sounds, well, super. Well, think again. Superfit has been used to describe cells that possess increased expression of the protein MYC. 
Now, MYC is a protein, a transcription factor that you may have heard about if you know about cellular reprogramming. It's the M in OSKM. And it worries people to have the M because overactivity of MYC is seen in cancer cells. And so, as again has been seen in Drosophila, if you have wild type, so normal cells in a tissue, where there's also cells that have an additional copy of MYC, the MYC cells are super competitive and take over the tissue. There's nothing even wrong with the wild type cells. And so this further reinforces the comparative nature of cellular competition. And so therefore, selecting for super fit cells could increase cancer formation as we age. Not good. But speaking of super, this leads me on to my next point about why we don't get fitter cells with age. <laughs> if everybody's super, no one will be. <laughs> comparisons and differences in fitness levels are required for cellular fitness to occur. So if all of the cells are less fit, then well, total tissue fitness will still go down even if there is still some form of cellular competition. Now, I don't really have much evidence to back this up, but it has two potential consequences. Firstly, the organism is then less able to detect precancerous cells, which could lead to cancer formation and death with the individual. And then secondly, there could be a time-dependent accumulation of unfit but viable cells that could lead to accelerated tissue and organ decay. Now, back in this 2015 Drosophila paper, they did actually investigate both of these hypotheses and found that the cancer rate didn't change without this ASOT protein. But flies don't really get cancer, do they? So you might be thinking, all right, we can understand that cellular competition is occurring in flies, but what about mammals? Well, Elaine Fuchs of the Rockefeller University in New York has pioneered some research in cell competition in mice. And her work interestingly shows that depending on the stage of development, the cellular competition mechanism varies. During early skin development, the winners kill the loser cells through engulfment, whilst in late skin development, the losers are eliminated through terminal differentiation which means the cell has become the last thing it will become and permanently exits from the cell cycle. But the cell doesn't actually die. And so, loss of cell fitness sensing could be a hallmark of ageing. But for certain, we need more evidence from other higher muscle organisms. What is the equivalent of cell competition in humans? Is there an equivalent? Did it just evolve senescence instead, in which case that's already a hallmark of ageing? Or is cellular senescence just a subset under the bigger umbrella of cell fitness? Or is it completely separate to senescence? Ultimately, we still seem to know very little about how a cell may display its fitness levels. But understanding this internal dialogue may enable us to develop ways of improving the odds of the cells that's the most beneficial to keep. Sort of like how the sponsors in the Hunger Games provide gifts to improve the survivals of the candidates they want to survive. We just don't know this language yet, and it is not the same language as the DNA sequence. It's some emergent feature. It seems to me that cellular competition also overlaps a little bit with the somatic mutation theory of ageing, whereby the mutations that accumulate with age might influence the fitness of a cell. I made a video on this recently and how the rate of mutations correlates with lifespan across different mammals, which you can watch here. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.